Hey there, artists. So I'd like to go over how we are going to be creating our paintbrush project. So I will have on the board a bunch of pictures for you to look at and you can see what inspires you and what type of paintbrush that you would like to make. So we are making again a paintbrush out of clay. I'm going to be giving you, you lucky ducks, a big slab that you'll probably need to share with your table. So be kind to everybody. Do not waste the slab. So here's just a couple paintbrushes I have out for inspiration. And you can see there's basically three parts. There's the part with the bristles. There's the metal part that holds the bristles in there. And then there's usually a wooden part as well to be able to hold it. So I will have a bunch of different stencils. Also, you lucky ducks, I've already made these for you. And you can choose the type of paintbrush that you would like to be, all right? So I'm gonna use one of these big ones here. I'm gonna lay it down on my slab. And what I'm gonna do is with a tool, it doesn't matter which tool, I'm going to gently trace Notice, I did not say cut. I said I am gently tracing into the clay. And then when you are finished tracing, you can remove it and return it because there's not enough tracers for everybody. Some people will be waiting. Okay, there I go. And then now I've removed the stencil, I've already traced it, and now I can go back and cut it. I like these plastic ones with the straight part, but there's other tools as well. Gently try to trace your line. You can do it in chunks like I'm doing. I like to cut pieces entirely off and just store them together because we're still gonna use those pieces actually. So I'm gonna show us maybe some extra strips or extra steps today. We're not gonna necessarily get that far, it's all right. Okay, so thank you again for your patience. Ugh. Boom, okay. So step one is complete. Now, if your shape is wonky or you don't like it, like I can see right here, I kind of messed up, you can, uh, they're, they're not symmetrical. You can adjust it a little bit. Do not cut into your handles though. I left your handles thick on purpose. All right. So before you go on, decide which side you like the best to be your front and which side you'd like to be the back. I like this side. So on the back, I need to carve my initials. So not very deep, but pretty big. I'm gonna put Miss, look how big those are, L. Don't worry about your teacher code or anything. Flip it back over and smooth out the edges. You might be able to use a damp sponge that you already has water on it. Do not put more water on it. You can use your fingers like I'm doing. All right, guys, when you're happy-ish with the shape, this is how we're going to be adding some more details. First of all, I need to add that silver part, all right? So you'll be able to look up at the board as well. And you might notice, or um, again, I'll show you the pictures after the video, that um, there's a lot of coils to tell you where the silver part is. So I'm gonna put coils right here. And again, if you're like, what is she talking about? I will show you the pictures, but I know you know coils. Take a piece of the, your leftovers, roll it on your table or in your hands. Is it long enough? Nope, not yet. Try to make it nice and even, Steven. Okay, and how do I stick my coil on again? I forgot. Did you say rescore and slip? I hope so. You can use any tool. I like forks, but you can use other tools. And I'm gonna make little bloop, 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 in a row where I'm gonna put it and along my little baby coil. Bloop, 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 bloop. Now I need to add slip, score and slip. I'm going to put a little slip 
on both parts that I scored and I can attach my little baby coil and I can rip off the extra. Did I rush? No, I did not. Okay. I'm gonna do one really fast right now for the top. <laughs> Let's see how fast Miss Langdon could go. And this might be the only steps that I show you for today. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna score it. I'm going too fast, so mine might not work out as well. But if you take your time, then you should. Oh my goodness, did you see me go for slip and I went, I put my fingers in the tool bin? Ugh. Oh no, I broke it. That's okay. Stick it down. Okay. And I've just made the silver part of my paintbrush. I could leave it like that. Or there's another more advanced trick. I could blend in just part of my coil. If you want to experiment on something before you do it on your real project, then experiment on all those little pieces that are at your tables. All right. So other things we're going to do for our paintbrush are, um, well, I need to add to the texture to make the bristles. What do you think would be a good thing to add texture with? I like the idea of just using a straight thing like this, but you can use, um, a fork, but I need to go straight down. And every once in a while I use my hands to get rid of any little peely bits that come up. Get rid of those peely bits. All right, my name again is on the back. Please don't forget that. A lot of your projects are gonna look similar. Do you see all those little peely bits in the camera? Can you see that sometimes? So you gotta take them away. All right. Go back and you could smooth, keep assessing. Is it the best that you're making it? Could it be better? I don't know. All right, folks. There's a one or two more things I wanna show you about the handle. If you wanted to add texture into the handle, you can do that in the way that I've already showed you by uh, putting one of those rolling pins. Another thing you could add texture with is actually stamps. That's right, folks. You can stamp your initials or something. Remember the stamps, especially the letters, you need to put them back in the right spot and clean them off. I'm gonna stamp the word art. So I can test it to make sure it fits. Yeah, I think I like it. So I'm gonna stamp and pull. If it has some color, don't worry, that color will actually go away. This clay needs to be dried when we're finished. Once it's dry, I'm going to fire it in the kiln. And when I fire it in the kiln, which is like a really hot oven, it's going to burn off all that extra ink. So eventually I won't see it. Gosh, I could have even write, wrote um, art right here. That would have been fun too. Okay, so the last thing that I need us all to do is because we're gonna hang these in the hall, is at the very top, I hope my hand's not covering it, I'm gonna use the blunt edge, not the, the very tippy top, I don't wanna break it. I'm going down a little bit, and I'm kind of twist, 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 and I'm twisting it so that I can pull it all the way through. Goodbye, tool. Did you see how I pulled it through instead of pulled it back? Then you'll get a nice circle, or. A uh, hole that goes all the way through your paintbrush. And actually, real life big paintbrushes have that so they, they could be hung anyway. I love my paintbrush. I can't wait till it gets dried, fired, and I get to paint it. All right, everybody, happy arting.